We're going to play uh, a bit of the old Bad Dudes versus Dragon Ninja. I'm not sure that Bangkok Nights is going to work. The alternate version. I had to try three versions of this to actually get one that works. Uh, on Vice with True Drive emulation turned off. And that's not even a guarantee it's going to work because Bangkok Nights worked like that on Win Vice. But it didn't work on the SD Tizy. But these are two games that re remind me of my second cousin, I believe, uh, called Eddie's. And uh, first thing he played when he did get his Amiga 500 and wiped 14 inch portable Sony Trinitron, same one that I had. Uh, with a SCART RGB lead, yeah, which is cheaper than buying the modulator, which was 20 quid. SCART cables were like 5 to 10 quid back then. So, right, here we go. Cursor up, down. Um, but I remember. Um, I actually recorded this on emulator doing a you know a cheating long play with a trainer uh, just to see all the graphics and it was like really late in the morning well early in the morning late at night it was like two three o'clock in the morning and I was like oh, I'm bored let's uh, let's check out Dragon Ninja on the uh, C64 I don't know what the uh, level trainer does. Doesn't say like press Commodore key or anything. So um, yeah, my mate Eddie's, who is also my second cousin. Um. He loved this game. I think he played it in the arcade, but uh, I remember he uh, he got the Amiga format or a CU Amiga magazine that had the uh, demo on it, uh, and he played that. It's all right on the Amiga. It's, it's not brilliant conversion, but it's not terrible. Uh, he liked it because he's coming from a C64. I'm not sure if he had it on the C64. He might have, because I can't remember when, in 1988, he did get his Amiga. It might have been for Christmas. So, well, I'm pressing fire to start, and uh, fuck all's happening, really. Joystick pulled white, and that's why Christian's face does something. Good thing we've got a trainer on. So, I'm not a fan of the uh, turquoise sky, that really should be blue. Um, but actually, the graphics ain't bad. The, again, you know, the, the sprites are much nicer than the background graphics. And most of that is probably down to the horrible colour choices they've made. Whereas the sprites look really good. They're, the sprites are NES quality. And you're getting uh, three enemies on a line. You know, up to uh, seven in total on the screen. Depends if you jump down or up. Yeah, see there was a little line there, so basically everything's made up of two sprites as well. So the sprite multiplexing is quite advanced actually. They're multiplexed high res overlay sprites.
that blocked? Is that what? Oh, right. Why won't you let me go that way? Maybe you've got to kill a certain amount of enemies. So, uh, if this sort of coding engine was used on um, on uh, Golden Axe, it might actually be worth playing. <clears throat> you only get one enemy on screen at a time on Golden Axe, which is a real shame. They've, uh, they've just fucked it up. Oh, you lose your blade. Yeah, we will do it. I think the graphics get better after this level, so... Oh, it gets really tricky on the last point. Here you go, this is better. Oh, so you can jump back up there, but... Oh, right. Okay. I don't know why sometimes you can and sometimes you can't. So you've got the parallax of the uh, grey buildings in the background, which is fine. There are a bit of uh, pet ski graphics there for the actual building. So diagonal uh, right and down, or left and down, will actually um, do like flying kicks. Yeah, so there's quite a few movements here. So as, um, as it just goes to show how crap Golden Axe was designed. I know what they've done, but uh, you know, if you had a coder of this sort of quality, Golden Axe would have been much nicer. The truck is quite nice. I think possibly a uh, different colour, maybe red would have been nice, but uh, maybe the arcade truck is blue, I'm not sure. So uh, yeah, me and my mate Eddie's, I remember he, as soon as he got an Amiga, because uh, he didn't have a lot of money, that was a massive expense for uh, his family. Massive expense, we, you know, probably uh, what people got as a grant check, you know, from the government, if they go to university levels. Because the Trinitron was uh, 250 quid or 200 quid, um, and the Amiga 500 was 500 quid. So the first thing he did was um, <clears throat> get a copy of Micromar and, uh, uh, you know, start replying to people looking for pen pals to talk about Amiga discs. They, they said Amiga discs specifically. Oh, we missed that one. Um, so I used to get loads of copied games. I didn't actually have to get any copied games until much later. Um, so I'd go around his uh, house every Sunday. Um, So these graphics are a bit better, but I'm not sure about the uh, red sewer water. Maybe brown would have been nicer. Something funny going on with their colour choices, I must admit. But yeah, like I said, I'll go around there on a Sunday. So I drive my car, because he didn't live that far from me. I had probably a five minute drive on a Sunday. Depending on uh, whether you hit a red or a green light at the uh, crossings. And uh, uh, I brought around my uh, external disk drive and uh, we had X copy running and we had a pile of blank disks on uh, one disk drive and a pile of uh, you know games we'd sorted through for the uh, copied disks. And 
you know, stick that on the uh, Amiga 500 and just keep inserting them one at a time in each one and uh, run your next copy. So we must have spent like an hour copying games. But we always played like two player games like uh, either Kickoff 2 or Goal. I can't remember which one we played. Um, uh, other two player games as well that were good. But we're talking up to 1991. So, no later than that on the games front. Now, because he had a C64 for so long, and he, was, uh, he wasn't that, ten um, that technical, um, he sort of missed out. The, you know, Defender of the Crown. Uh, oh, what else? Uh, Shadow of the Beast which runs on a Mika 1000 and Marvel Madness, you expected that sort of quality but he came into it from a time when uh, most C64 arcade ports were really, you know, they, they weren't putting the effort in anymore. Well, I don't know what happened there, see? So sprites are starting to glitch up a bit but remember, sprites always glitch on the NES even on so-called uh, AAA titles. So, you know, a bit of glitching is absolutely fine, especially for a game that costs, you know, 40 quid less than an NES version. I don't know what happens if you don't collect everything. Uh, we used to play uh, Speedball 2, uh, two-player, that was another good two-player game. Yeah, it's fun times actually, and then I'd go out, go home, and uh, you know, pick the uh, the good single player games that we didn't play after copying all the games, and uh, try them out by myself on my Amiga 1000 with my Amiga 1010 external floppy drive. So I would go around there when I had like my Amiga 1000 for about a year uh, and um, you know and play C64 games around there so I did keep in touch with like what was going on with the C64. Ah well, you know this Eddie's guy is jinxed mate because everything I tried to do with his name attached to it, he's fucked. Let's try the new version of Bangkok Nights I installed. 